So today I am going to tell you about one of my favorite tools in my tool belt. Uh, and I'd venture to say it's probably not what you're thinking. It's not like this great heirloom hammer or some other vintage tool. It is uh, a speed square. And this is uh, probably one of the most versatile tools that I have. Um, this one is a Swanson speed square. There's a lot of different versions. I would say if you're gonna get one, uh, first off, I'll say that you definitely need one. And if you're gonna get one, get a metal one. Uh, doesn't matter what brand you get, but some of them have some extra tips and tricks. And I am gonna basically show you how to use a speed square for a lot more than what most people use them for. Um, most people just kind of use a speed square to mark a straight cut. So let's do that right here. We'll just make, boom. You've got a 90 degree line right across your board. And this cuts, this covers for basically up to a one by six. It goes a little bit longer than that. It goes six and a quarter inches, six and a half inches. But um, really that is, I would say most people use it for, and I use it all the time like that. You'll notice on the speed square, it has this little T here so that you can fit it nicely onto the side of the board and it snugs right up against it. And as long as you've got it tight up against there, you've got a 90 degree angle and you've got a 45 degree angle. And those two angles obviously are the two that you're gonna use the most often. So they're kind of built into it. But one of the other uses that a lot of people don't notice is that you also have this little line here. See the arrow, it says pivot. That means that this you can use as a pivot point. And these numbers all along here that say degree are the degree angle that you are creating. So if I'm right here, Let's go back to my line. I'm right here. If I turn this slide to the edge of the board where I get to a 15, now this line here, that angle is a 15 degree angle between my straight line. You can go all the way to 90 degree angle if you want to. You can just, you just have to hold it at that pivot point. And from right there, you know what angle you've got. So that's really useful. It's just like a protractor for those of us that remember geometry in high school. Um, one of the other things you can use is this is used to um, gauge your rafter sizes or your rafter angles. So if you look here, you've got the common, you got 30, 24, 18, all the way down to one. That's gonna show you basically a roof slope. Um, if you look at it like this, so if I've got a one, that's a one in 12 roof slope, two in 12 roof slope, a three, you know, you can go all the way up like that to a eight in 12 roof slope. These are the angles we're looking at on here. That's how you can tell you could put this up on the edge of a roof or when you're doing some rafter framing, this helps you cut your rafter tails and uh, determine right, the right angle, right? So if you're running a rafter on a roof, you wanna make sure that you cut the end at the proper angle and you go, okay, I've got a four in 12 slope. I can mark it here and now I'm gonna have a rafter that when it comes out, it extends, it's a vertical line instead of a rafter that comes down and ends like that. You always want it to be straight so you can put your gutters, your drip edges, things like that in. Another cool way that you can use this on here is you have, uh, if you'll notice on here, I've got a lot of these different markings. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are the inch markings. And then I've got these dots here. I've got a dot right there. That's one inch from this edge two inches from this edge, three inches, all the way to three and a half inches. And that becomes useful if you want to make a mark. So let's say I'm laying out my studs and I've got, um, let's put it right here. I've got a stud. I'm gonna put my stud right here. And I want to, some people will draw a line on the other side of the stud, where you're gonna go. So I know that each stud, you're using two by four framing, you've got a one and a half inch wide stud. So I can go and put this at the one and a half mark right there and I can draw another line. Now that's exactly where my stud goes. And if I wanna lay out another stud or say you've got your king stud, you've got a jack stud next to it because you're framing out an opening, you do the same thing. You know, you can, ha you can do that built up one and a half. So now I'm there, here's my jack stud, here's my king stud. You can lay out your studs that way. You can set this up really to, you know, speed through your framing setup. And it makes it very easy when you mark your 16 inch on centers or 24 inch on centers, whatever it is you're doing, you can use your speed square then to draw those lines and give yourself a really good lineup, which is mostly, I think what most people use this for. Um, another trick you may not know on here is using these, see these little uh, cutouts here into there? They are lined up with the measurements. I'll put it up against here. They're lined up with these measurements. So this one right here, if I wanna draw a one inch line across here, let's say I wanna run a two by four right on the edge here. And I, so I'm gonna to go to one and a half. 
and if I want to run it on edge, maybe I can do it, put that draw a line there. But let's say um, I want to line it two, two inches because that's not going to be quite as clear. If you see here, I'm just going to hold my pencil right up against there and I can draw a line across my board like that and I know that that line is two inches from this edge. As long as you've got a square edge, if your edge is wandering or unfinished, it's not a great deal, but that way I can draw at two inches. So you can do that anywhere between one and three inches on here. You can use that. Great tool. Here's another one. See the little diamond on here? A lot of people may not know what this is for. The diamond is right at three and a half inches. So what is three and a half inches in your framing, right? Two by fours, right? So I can just put that right in the diamond and I can run this along here. Since that's something I'm going to use more often than any other measurement, my one and a half, my three and a half, and now I've got a three and a half. That's for my two by four on its side. So I've got, I, I can do a lot of straight lines, things like that with this to get my measurements, my angles we've talked about. One of the last things I want to show you is that I also use this as a guide for cutting. So I've drawn a straight line here. Let's draw another one. Just a straight line across here. Here's what I want to trim off. I've got a circ saw and I could just run this over here and line it up and try and get like a perfectly straight cut. But what instead I'll do is I'll line up my blade so I'm on the line and then I'm going to press my speed square up against the fence and I'm going to hold it tight to the board and then I'm going to cut through here and I'm going to have a, basically a built-in guide. And now I know I've got a straight cut here. Um, rather than having the potential with uh, Cirque Saw of maybe there's a little bit of wandering or things like that. So you've always got this as a handy uh, fence and measuring tool. So those are some uh, pro tips for how you can use a speed square. This is a great tool. If you don't have one, I recommend you get one immediately just for making even just simple straight cuts and 45s from marking if you want to do that. But all these other things we've talked about, it's immensely useful. And uh, get a handy little spot, you can put it into your tool pouch and uh, you will use this constantly if it's in your tool pouch. So, hope that helps you. Remember, the right tool for the right job makes everything go a lot easier.